I'm sure you're all aware that La Liga have found itself a new partner for this season. And it's teamed up with one of the biggest, most successful gaming companies in EA Sports. Now, the idea, of course, for this is for there to be a crossover and appeal to younger and different audiences who are mad about esports, but to also join hands in committing to the future of football and its security. By uniting, uniting forces with different knowledge bases and backgrounds, together they can tackle some of the biggest challenges that the industry faces when it comes to protecting the well being of the sport. La Liga EA Sports, the future of football fandom in partnership with La Liga. Please help me in giving a warm welcome now out to the stage, your next speakers, Jorge de la Vega, Commercial and Marketing Director at La Liga, Angel Fernandez, Global Brand and Strategy Director at La Liga, Nick Vlodica, Senior Vice President and General Manager at EA Sports FC, James Salmon, Senior Marketing Director at EA Sports FC, and last but not least, your monitor, sorry, your moderator, rather, for this, Alex Payete, founder and chief strategy officer of Picnic. Enjoy it. Have fun, everyone. Alex, the stage is yours. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're excited to be here, especially with these two great companies that uh, started the journey, an amazing journey, and that's what we're going to be discussing in the next 40 minutes. This is a journey of a true partnership for the future of football and, uh, and the future of fandom, most importantly. Uh, the goal for this conversation is for them to share their behind the scene experience of this partnership so you can take away some uh, tips when you face uh, another partnership or a future partnership. There's, um, there's, um, I had the privilege to work on the, the La Liga side from Picnic, uh, the brand strategy, helping La Liga to reposition and rebrand. And, and through that process, I also had the privilege to get to know the team from EA. So uh, it really reminded me of an African proverb that some of you might have heard, which is that uh, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. And this is, exactly, this is an example of that, of togetherness. It mean, they, they, together, they really want to transform the way we experience football on and off the pits. And that's, that's what we want to hear. The first thing we want to hear from them is, how was the experience in the, when the first, what was the first time when the relationship started? And why it happened in the first place? <laughs> why you guys, you guys are so aligned, and you're gonna see in a minute how aligned they are strategically and creatively. But, uh, but how did the whole relationship start in the first place? Angel, do you wanna go first? Uh, yeah, well, basically, uh, we were working with EA for a lot of years. Uh, well, and you know uh, perfectly uh, them from... You know. Yeah, well, with the relationship with them, we started uh, like more than 10 years. We have been working together, so it's a long time. Uh, but specifically because of that relationship, we, there was a moment that we were starting to think about, uh, about the future and about uh, what sh which should be the, the next title partner for, for La Liga. The good thing here was that we had time enough. Uh, and once you face a situation like this, that you, are, you make the decision that you want to have a title partner, um, you need to find the one that is bringing the more value. Mm -hmm. Which, if you don't have time, this value, well, you can have some doubts about uh, when we talk about value, what we mean. Um, so it's not the highest bid, it's not the, well, that something that can be very common. In our case, we wanted to think who was going to bring more value to La Liga and to help us to achieve the goals that we had. And the good thing was that it, is, it was not only from the commercial perspective, it is also for the brand perspective. Mm. So we had a lot of plans for La Liga brand. We saw pretty clear where we wanted to have our brand. And when we were saying which brands would, could help us to achieve these goals faster, uh, well, we, we knew that one of them was already a partner of La Liga and was the, the, the best one for that. So that's why we, in, in, in a very casual conversation, we said, hey guys, now we are, we are in a different mood. We have been working together. You've got different needs. We've got different needs. Why don't we meet up and talk about this? And mm -hmm. the importance of having a, a, a title sponsor, I mean, gives a lot of attribution of you know, who, we, who you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we need to find you know, the perfect 
partner for, for leveraging what we want to, uh, to achieve. Mm -hmm. And they were perfect in that, in the, in, in that sense. Yeah, yeah, because, well, title partner is obviously a really strong uh, source of revenue, but it's conditioning one of the most important things for the company, which is the brand. Mm -hmm. You're sharing one of the most important source of revenue too. So yeah. you only think about the, the, the money. Yeah. Well, it will impact in a, or it can probably impact in your future in a positive way or in a negative way. Definitely. So uh, that's why we wanted to be sure. And yeah. we said, why don't we meet up? And we, we had a meeting in London um, <laughs> like two years ago. Yeah. Um, but because of not being in the same place at that moment, we say, well, let's try to understand how can we uh, propose something different because we, we are already partners and we are top partners already. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the kind of value that we can bring to the brand in order to have this upgrade and to, to convey that we are committed for the future to make something bigger? Yeah, so, um, so, so James, how did you leave that experience of, of reframing an already existing relationship that yeah. you guys had already. So you were elevating and reframing <coughs> it for the benefit of the fans, right? Absolutely. And I've, I've, it's funny you mentioned the meeting in London, Jorge, because reflecting on that really fondly, that was you know, the middle part of our journey, um, but also the start of a new one, an evolution that both of our brands are going through. And all of that's been grounded in what I would describe as a shared philosophy around creating the future of football fandom which sounds super profound, but I'm just going to acknowledge that as well. But I think that, that, that the equity in that, the shared equity where we're, we're really strongly aligned is how that's grounded in technology, for sure. Um, but three core pillars that I know, Alex, we've, we've spoken about as well and that we're going to talk about today in authenticity, innovation, and purpose, and how those map together to inspire the world to, to love football. Yeah, yeah. Actually, talking about this, uh, these three areas, when we talk about authenticity, mm. which is an amazing topic, you know, it, it, is, it is clearly how, 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 um, how much you share that vision. You, know, you mm. share the vision of transforming the way we experience football, but through the power of authenticity. Yes. Right? And uh, authenticity, as you mentioned, mm. uh, it also has to do with the authentic experience. Uh, either it's a passive, uh, active, or interactive experience, but you gotta feel authentic. Yes. Uh, can you please develop on, on, on your view on authentic experiences? Yeah, absolutely. So just, just to touch on the passive, active, and interactive part first, um, football fandom has evolved enormously, uh, even in the last couple of years. And what we've recognized really quickly is the role that we have to play historically has been very much grounded in that interactive space. We've been known as, as a video game, but the, the, you know, the ambition is to go beyond that. And La Liga are a great partner uh, to, to work alongside to get there, um, where they're, they're absolutely experts in passive fandom. And what I mean by that is broadcast and going, fans going to games and experiencing the sport, active fandom in terms of physically playing the sport, and then the interactive fandom part is, is where we've, we've played a role for the longest time. That interconnectivity exists across all of these within the modern fan, and I think there's been this misconception, perhaps, that video games is a silo and that it lives in this pillar and that gamers are not participating in football fandom across these other areas. Whereas our research suggests the, the absolute opposite. The majority of our players are spending more time playing the sport. They're playing more time, they're spending more time uh, watching La Liga. And I think in the, again, in the meeting in London that Jorge had referenced, we spoke about that at length and there's the traditional authenticity. So when we talk about the licenses that exist within our game, uh, the clubs, the stadiums, the players, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then authenticity is also about how fans have the opportunity to vicariously live out their footballing dreams within our experience. And Nick and his team have done an amazing job on the, uh, the technology front and innovation front to kind of really bring that um, you know, to, to the next level. Yeah, we're going to talk about innovation with Nick uh, in, a, in a second. But uh, before going to that, you know, when we talk about authenticity, it has to do also with how much the lines are blurred between physical and digital. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, you can, you can uh, play a game, but then, uh, you know, a video game, then play a game, watch a game, whatever, the different ways of experiencing, you know, the same, uh, the same level of authenticity. And also, uh, talking to you earlier, there's a, there's a tremendous shift uh, here on the way we enjoy uh, the games about, this is not so much about the video game looking like real life, but actually the real game looking like a video game. Mm. And that's, 
a different experience because the level of close-up that you get on a video game, now you can get it on a real game, right? Uh, you can get, you can feel what the players feel. Mm. You can, you can feel actually the human life while you're watching a game broadcast. You can actually feel the human side of the players, how much they suffer. You can empathize because it's so close. The experience is completely different. Do you wanna, do you wanna talk about, you know, that authentic experience? with a close-up uh, from the Liga perspective, from the broadcast perspective? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, once we decided that we wanted to transform football and make it make each w uh, world better in terms of bringing things to real life to the video game and the other way around, then you start to make this, this, this uh, understanding on what this authenticity means, no? and precisely what you said. No? Uh, how can we bring these emotions to, to the real life and has, of course, a, an impact on the broadcasting. We are right now recording uh, and shooting all the locker rooms. We are shooting uh, in new perspectives, in new ways, with immersive uh, cameras, cinematic cameras. I mean, we want to capture these moments because these make more real the, the experience. You can feel what they feel. You can understand what they, what, what they are doing. Uh, all the tactical moments that right now we are shooting and it's something very unique. Uh, precisely gives you this, this, this angle you know, of mm. feeling their pain, feeling their victory, and this make it everything more, more, more real. And it's something that you can already do with a video game. You mm. can play with the cameras, the angles, you can, you can be there, but with real life it's more challenging and it's what we want to, to yeah. achieve. I can only imagine how challenging it might be to do that live. You know, the broadcast production, to get that feeling and do it live. Yeah, we've, we're facing different challenges. Uh, uh, how you can make more real the video game uh, is a challenge. How can you make things happen in real uh, uh, life, let's say. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's challenges in, in different ways in terms of, of technology and in terms of, of understanding of what you want to do. Uh, and this is actually a perfect example of just how the partnership has come to life and pulling the creative teams together. And, they each have different experiences and expertises, of course. And as we think about even just presentation, the broadcast package, as, as we built out the game over the years, it was always meant to reflect what was happening on a traditional broadcast. And one of the advantages that, that we've always had is we can place the camera anywhere in, in the action and, and be able to bring players, fans into the experience with a level of immersion that's not otherwise possible. And so as we brought the two teams together and we thought about not only this year, but the future, where are those moments where we can start to move the camera both in broadcast, but also the game into different places to really build on that immersion. And technology is such an important part behind this for us where you think about the last few years and just how much better the visuals have become in the game from a player standpoint and the recognizability in faces, um, the animation in hair, as an example, not for me, but for a lot of players <laughs> out there. Um, that particular piece, the pitch, the detail in stadiums, everything in and around the crowd. Um, and two, three, four years ago, we wouldn't have been able to pull in the cameras really, really tight and be able to show that off because you could immediately pick apart the scene and go, hmm, that doesn't look real, that doesn't look real. But in pulling the two groups together, in, in, in being able to scan players, their heads, and being able to scan stadiums, the whole purpose is to just bring our fans closer to the real thing in a way that either they experience on match day when they go to a stadium, or if they don't, they get that experience in EA Sports FC. Well, the, the, the thing here sorry, is that okay. uh, for the first time, I would say that uh, we, we, we have learned from them a lot in terms of production because they are so passionate in, in getting this uh, 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 authentic, authenticity that um, they have been learning how to improve the, the experience for the, for the fans that they are not much better than we do in terms of this production. So they want to be real, but at the end of the day, when you broadcast a game, you are not able to convey this authentic authenticity in some cases. So 
this uh, user experience, that they, they, they are expert on that. It is what we have tried to, to learn in order to improve our own experience. And yeah. I think it is the first time that we are doing that. Normally, it was like we are the experts, so these guys are trying to replicate what we are doing. They inspire now, us, they, yeah. they make us better. Yeah, that now they are, they are, we are learning from them. But that's the essence of a true partnership, right? When you make each other better. It's mm -hmm. not about one plus one equal two, but one plus one equal three. That the result, you guys multiply the impact of what you were doing separately. Yep. Uh, I think that's, that's critical when you consider a partnership, is how can, we, yeah. how can we make each other better? It's not how can we complement, it's how can we multiply. Mm -hmm. And I think that you're making, uh, you're hearing you talking clearly, especially when, for example, when it comes to innovation, right? You both understand innovation as a means to an end, not the end in itself, right? Like, you want to make sure that the ultimate um, benefit here is for the fun. Like it's the famous triple win. No, it's not just a win-win between the two of you, but it's a, a third win, which is the critical one, which is the win for the fun. And you have that clearly in your heads and in every conversation that you had. When it comes to innovation, uh, could you share what, what some examples of what you're doing, for example, in high promotion V or or in broadcast, for the benefit of the fun? Not 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 from a technical perspective, but how your approach to innovation is actually feeding the future of fandom. Who wants to uh, kick it off? I'm happy to, to jump at any point. Yeah, I've got a little bit of the more it. technical side. but no, we'll do, uh, do technical and then we humanize it. Okay. Um, <laughs> so for the audience, Hypermotion V, when you reference Hypermotion V, what does V stand for? V stands for volumetric. And this is a technology that we've now been working on for multiple years. There's a lot that needed to come together in order to be able to pull this off. But as we talk about partnerships and outstanding partners, um, the technology basically allows us to take all of the data from player movement in, pat in uh, matches, across pitches, um, across stadiums in La Liga, and pull that data and bring it into the game so that when fans and players are playing the game, they get to play with real world animation. So historically for us, the way that we've created animations in the game has been through a process called motion capture where we bring players into a warehouse type uh, facility and we have a shot list of, of what we want them to do and we then take all of that capture and we put it into the game but you lack the intensity of matches, you don't get the diversity of players um, and so this year we were able to take cameras, put them in stadiums um, for both men's and women's matches and be able to take that data and pull it into the game. And the reason I say we've been working on this for a few years is one component is volumetric data being at a high enough fidelity. Another component is being able to just ingest all of that data and build technologies, machine learning technologies to be able to take that data and apply it to players. And as players are running around and uh, performing different actions, being able to seamlessly blend between different animations and from a gameplay standpoint, making sure that you still have responsiveness when you press the button is paramount. The game needs to look great, but it needs to feel great when you're performing actions. And so building out the machine learning technology in order to be able to facilitate that was a key component. But we wouldn't be able to bring that to life without having the stadiums in the, mm. uh, the cameras in the stadiums, excuse me. Um, and so support in and around that has pushed us forward and is really um, an industry first in terms of integrating volumetric data. And, and we're just so proud to be able to have partnered on this and, and bring it into the game for EA Sports FC. So you're setting the standards basically of what's coming because this is pretty innovative. Uh, and, the, and the amount of, of coordination that it takes with broadcast mm. is, is never seen before. So, so uh, how, how do you take it from, from, from La Liga? How do, you, how do you align with them, making sure that everything is simultaneous and you can feed some data to them and they can feed you data so the experience is seamless? Well, our approach is, 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 is life, it's real life. So uh, as we said, I mean, uh, the way they approach the experience on the video game is an inspiration on the way that we want to show uh, the experience to the, to the fan. So with the data and so on, I mean, we have to, we, we've have, uh, we have been inspired with, uh, you know, the angles, precisely the angles. That's why we are allocating these aerial cameras that used to be 20 meters, right now are five meters, because it's better experience for the fan, a penalty or free kick or whatever for the video game angle. 
So, and then how you can uh, allocate those data, those probabilities, real time. You know, so it's, 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 different, it's, different, uh, it's a different path. You know? they, they are collecting as the data. We've got the data, we have to allocate it in, 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 in real time. In some way, the video game has some uh, algorithm, and correct me if <laughs> I'm saying uh, something <laughs> nonsense, but uh, in some way you can predict what is going to happen to allocate uh, certain data. We cannot do this. So the thing is that this uh, innovation uh, for us is the inspiration to try to achieve this real-time uh, data in order to make a, a more, let's say, uh, enriched experience. Mm -hmm. Or the a uh, AR graphics that they are using are completely inspiration is the, the ones that we are using uh, on the broadcasting and, and, and so on. And based on your experience so far, who would you say that is the segment, the demographic segment that is engaging more with this kind of experience? Uh, I'm assuming it's the younger generation, but uh, mm. how, how are they engaging? Because the, as we said earlier, all this is for the benefit of the fun, yes. right? To enhance the experience, to elevate the experience, no matter if it's a video game or a live broadcast. So uh, how, how are you seeing the fans engaging with this, with this experience? Are you getting any preliminary feedback? Are you getting yeah. any? I mean, I, I can take that one, Alex. Yeah. Like, I think we've, you know, we spoke about this a little bit yesterday evening, but we, we see this remarkable impact in our product that we call the W effect, mm -hmm. which is ahead of a, a huge La Liga match, we'll see massive engagement in the fixture. So say it's Real Madrid versus Sevilla, we're here in Sevilla. Um, and then at, when, the, when the game kicks off and the broadcast experience kicks in, massive drop off of engagement within the product. Half time, little spike. Again, the second half kicks off, that drops off. And then at the end of the match, uh, we see players flood in to either celebrate their team's win or course correct their, their team's failure. Um, but I think, you know, just leaning on Ankel's point around uh, the crossover between virtual and real and how those lines are getting ever blurred. Uh, as, an, as an Englishman in Spain, it would be remiss of me not to talk about Jude Bellingham on this, uh, on this platform. Um, and there was some, uh, some amazing footage that Ankel shared with me yesterday, uh, cinematic footage of Jude's winner. Um, and I, we, we looked at, Nick and I looked at that yesterday, and my immediate reaction was, that, that looks like FC. Yeah. It's FC 24. <laughs> Um, but I think those lines between broadcast and real and virtual and real are going to be ever blurred. And from the fans' perspective, Alex, to come back to the previous point, interactive, active, passive, it's blurred. Fans oh. are not just gamers or, or just players or just fans in terms of the traditional stadium going or, or broadcast watching fandom that we've, we've known to grow up with. The modern football fan hmm. is, is blurring across all of these verticals. Hmm. Actually, if there's one category that will benefit from the digital approach, it's this one. Hmm. Right? Other categories have tried so hard to offer digital experiences where there's, you cannot tell the difference between virtual and real, but this yeah. one is actually setting the standards for other categories to follow. You know? So if, before- If I may add one, one other quick thing just on this is, um, we don't build for a specific fan. Yeah. I think one of, one of the really important pieces is that we are building an experience um, in terms of what you see, what you feel, what you hear, um, what you play, obviously, with, with different interactions, depending on whether you're on a mobile phone or on a console. It is a very, very diverse community of fans. And this is why authenticity is such an important piece for us, is... That is the one thing that is universal. If they see it happen in the real world, we need to be able to deliver that experience. But an interactive experience, one that they wouldn't otherwise potentially be able to have. And so as we think about the future and, and, and some of the different things that we'll be doing and new types of things, it's still rooted very much in, in authenticity and making sure that fans of the sport, when they come into the game or vice versa, there's that immediate familiarity. As we talked a little bit about sort of the positioning of, of cameras on, on Bellingham's winner in, on match day one, um, and right away I see that's in the game, it's on broadcast, it's in the game, there's that familiarity. When we look at broadcast overlays and particularly the push into AR and starting to add more and more data behind what's going on, um, and not only informing, but teaching fans in and around what's going on and why. Um, it was particularly proud for us within the team and the partnership that we had and the creative teams working together when 
Match Day 1, new package, we see it on broadcast and we go, oh my goodness, that is clearly bringing a collaboration to life and things that we've been doing and seeing that reflected in what's happening in La Liga's design was just an incredibly powerful moment, I think, for everyone involved. And um, it's, it's, it's an important one for me because those that work on it within the EA Sports FC team are football fans first, are, are so incredibly passionate about what we do and making sure that we are, as you said, it's all about the fans and delivering great experiences to fans, but very much on brand with what they expect, and that's what we'll continue to do in new ways that we haven't done before. Hmm. Uh, just uh, to add something, I was completely concerned about the video gamification of the experience, real experience, how it's going, how it's going to impact to, to, to my father, for instance. Because young audiences, uh, is, I mean, is, uh, is very, uh, I mean, is the direct line. But precisely what you said, uh, the experience is universal. Hmm. So uh, we are helping, or at least my father is trying to understand, he, I mean, it helps a lot, this uh, um, new data, these new experiences, these new angles, because it's a technology and video game uh, brings him the possibility to get more closer to something that he used to uh, experience in, in, in a certain way. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the question was <laughs> where in that moment is how are these going to deliver and connect with, with, with old audiences that yeah. they are not used, not used to play with, with video games. Yeah, so how do you find the balance, both of you, how do you find the balance when, in order to avoid the over gamification mm -hmm. of real life, how do you find the balance to keep the human feel, right? Because that's what gets people, the, the fans engaged right, with the, the, the actual experience that they're feeling. How, how do you balance that, making sure that, uh, that we don't lose that? How do you do that from an innovation perspective? Mm -hmm. Well, for our side is how we can get more close, is what we explain, uh, I mean, how technology mm, makes you understand the feelings in that, that moment. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, the, 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 the balance, if this is something very, uh, let's say that, uh, misses the opportunity to understand what is going on, uh, I mean, it's, it's not working for our side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if these elements uh, improve the, 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 the experience, I mean, I think this is the, 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 the correct balance. Mm -hmm. The other piece I would add to it is, again, I come back to rooted in authenticity, um, having data from real world matches, um, the scans that I mentioned, all of that is not subjective, and all of that appeals to all fans because it's grounded in reality. And so the way that we balance it is making sure that what's happening this weekend, we can have it in the game by Monday or Tuesday, where it used to take months to be able to get that, do the work, that, the magic that we have to do in order to get it into the game. Now it's gone from months to weeks to week to days to hours. <laughs> And so that becomes the powerful connection, is taking what somebody sees and being able to experience that interactively really, really quickly. Hmm. The, the, I, I just add, there is, there is so many benefits to the fan off the, off the back of this as well, and the role that innovation can play in furthering the fan experience. I think a, a great example is going back to the pandemic and how we were able to take the, the audio files within the game provide those to broadcasters to then use that in the absence of fans in stadiums. Mm. I think more recently to player of the month and how that's brought to, brought to life through La Liga. Mm. Um, these experiences are bringing fans closer to the sport they love, which is a benefit for sure for, for, for us, mm. uh, for La Liga, but, but, but importantly for the fan themselves. Mm. It's amazing how aligned you are. You know, normally when you, when you work on brand partnerships, obviously you look for like a strategic fit. But in this case, it's an example of a purposeful partnership because, I mean, if you go to your specific purposes, are so aligned, mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, you know, La Liga's purpose is inspire the world through the power of football, while EA's uh, purpose is inspire the world to love football, you know, and, uh, and that's those, those two things. How, 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 how do they come together, mm -hmm. you know, the power of love for football, let's say? Yes. Uh, how do you feel when, when you first discover the, the purpose from La Liga or when you first discover the purpose from EA? It's like you cannot be more aligned than that. Absolutely. And again, I, I remember having a very similar conversation to this with Ankel uh, going back 18 months to two years. And 
how both from, through the rebrand process, we wanted to ensure that, for FC at least, that this wasn't going to just be a change of symbol, but that you know, our future would show a symbol of change. And one, one vehicle in which we have, we're looking to accomplish that is FC Futures. And uh, our plan to invest $10 million in the future of the sport and in advancing grassroots football. Um, we, we set about doing a huge body of research that La Liga were intimately involved with uh, around where the needs most existed for that investment and centered on kind of four core pillars. Partners, so working with La Liga on existing initiatives, mm -hmm. uh, physical equipment, practices and pitches. And I think just to unpack briefly, Alex, e each of those. Um, pitches, we, we were fortunate a few weeks back to launch the first one in collaboration with La Liga uh, in Madrid, working with a local artist, Boa Mistura, uh, which will again blur the lines between virtual and real because Nick's, Nick and his team have integrated that within the FC24 products. But importantly, given that back to the community to use the pitch to, to play the sport. Um, the, the playing equipment, and the investment in 10,000 footballs that are, again, leaning into La Liga's network, uh, distributing those to schools and community clubs where it's most in need. Um, the practices, so just briefly on that, because I, I spoke yeah. earlier about yeah. um, the crossover between fandom. One of those key stats was that people were playing our game and then going out there and playing the sport. And we wanted to be more intentional in how we forged that. The way we accomplished that was to take our in-game practices and democratize them for coaches, for parents, for players oh. to be able to, to use. And again, through the relationship with La Liga, we were able to work with Fernando Morientes to voice over those practices. Oh. Um, and you know, all, of, all of this coming together um, has really shown like a shared equity and that, that vision and purpose to come back to the, mm -hmm. the first point, Alex, to inspire the world to love football. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to purpose, purpose is not only your compass for everything you do, but also it's everything you do on the pitch and off the pitch. So to your point, you know, what FC Futures is a great example of the social impact that you can have um, based on your, guided by your purpose. What about La Liga with uh, inspiring the world through the power of football? How, what, what are you doing off the pitch uh, to, to, to demonstrate and to, and to celebrate the power of football with, with fans? It's interesting in terms of the alignment we, we had because this was not something that uh, brand guys suddenly discover. Uh, I mean, they have been working for years on this vision and now it's synthesized in, in the new brand. Same uh, for us. We are more than uh, first division, second division. We, are, we have a lot of competitions, we have a lot of experience and we have a lot of programs there. That's why, I mean, we rediscover ourselves that we were inspiring the world through the values of, of football and with those initiatives. So for us, it was like a simple bringing these assets to the, to the, to the agreement because we already uh, were doing that. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's a matter of um, social programs, uh, it's a matter of building pitches, it's a matter of uh, building the future of football uh, from the grassroots. So this is uh, our approach and that's why uh, we have the le we've got the legitimacy to, to to, to inspire the world because we have been doing this for, for the last 10 years. Yeah. Now we are going to communicate it in, in the appropriate way. Mm -hmm. So this is another area when, when thinking of a partnership with another company, another brand, thinking of social impact, it's a critical area because if there's an area where the impact needs to be multiplied, is social, right? Mm. So that's when you join forces, not only commercial impact, but social impact. When you join forces in different, in different areas where EA was working on, that there was similar to the areas where La Liga were, were, was working on, you know, when you join forces, you're going to add much more value into that. Right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's also something very unique to this partnership. You know? And we have been working for years with campaigns against racism yeah. together. I mean, yeah. it's not something in, in new for us. We have been working on, 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 on that purpose, shared purpose uh, together. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we have found, uh, uh, let's say, this common purpose that it helps or it enhance the work that we have been doing for a while. Uh, because when we talk about transforming football, uh, well, we, we are not talking about blurring these uh, barriers between physical and digital. It's also breaking other kind of barriers. And we have been doing that for, for many, many years. And what we're doing now, it is, well, some of the projects were isolated or we were doing ourselves. Why don't we go together and we can amplify and we can multiply the effect of this social impact. So mm. that's why we, we feel really comfortable with that because it is not on, only on the pitch, it's off the pitch. 
and, and well, it, it gives credibility to our common purpose. Mm -hmm. you know, something that is very rare, I mean, the alignment that you have is so natural that, uh, that uh, you even were aligned in the milestone that you were going through as a brand. Normally, as most of you know, you know, when you work for a company, going through a repositioning process or a rebranding process doesn't happen often. You know, maybe you do it once every 10 years uh, or 20 years even. Um, and, uh, but what was interesting and very unique with this partnership is about both companies were going ex simultaneously uh, through a rebranding and repositioning process. You know? And uh, EA Sports FC and La Liga, was, uh, the, both of them were you know, repositioning and reframing their meaning, but also restyling and rebranding all the visual and verbal branding at the same time. Um, and this could be very tricky, because uh, <laughs> normally when you do a partnership, if one, of the, uh, one side is going through a rebranding, you know, it, it, you know, it, it's just one side is, is going through a, through a transformation, but the other one is a stable, mm -hmm. and it's what it is. So it gives kind of like that stability and that peace of mind. But in this case, both brands were in a, in a phase of redefinition. Uh, how, how do you live that? Yeah. Was it helpful? Was it, a, was it helpful the fact <laughs> that you both were questioning yourselves about your visual and verbal branding? Absolutely. And I, l let me just start by stating the blinding obvious. Like, this isn't easy. I mean, you touched on it already, Alex, but it's the, it's the truth. But going on, going on this journey with Angel and the team certainly was hugely helpful for us. Um, there's, there's the, ob the obvious way in which you know, we've, we've seen success through the years, the, the commercial element, the, the interactive engagement that we've seen, but I think we're, we're both in the fortunate position of brands resonating across generations. You know, I was very fortunate to grow up playing EA Sports titles with my father, and as recently as yesterday, was able to play FC for the first time with my daughter Rosie. And that, there's an emotional connection that exists there, which I know is exactly the same as being someone that grew up um, watching Jonathan Woodgate and David Beckham and others playing in La Liga. Um, so it's important to get that right. But I think to come back to the very start of the, the, you know, the conversation, Alex, we talked about things that mattered to fans, and that was authenticity, innovation, and, and purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think when um, the, the kickoff of this, this partnership and this opportunity started, back in London many months ago, as Jorge spoke at the, the, the top of the session, um, philosophically, it was clear that there was an alignment around growing the game, inspiring the world to love football, and grounding this partnership in technology. Hmm. And because we were both going through this, and it takes time, it afforded us the opportunity to really think through the different pieces and look at what's most important now, what is still to come, and how do we build towards that. Whereas if we had potentially a bit of a different situation, sometimes those things can be a little bit late, a little bit of a scramble. And so when we think about sort of, you mentioned milestones and the process, both being in this together, early stages of what we were going through, it allowed us to bounce ideas off of each other and spend more time on the creative, the ideation phase in a way that we might not have otherwise been able to. But that's a great point because um, from our side, we went through different brand partnership projects. And what's interesting, if there's only one brand that is going through a rebranding, the other one is kind of waiting, waiting mm -hmm. for them to fix it. You know, it's like, just figure it out. You know, <laughs> I have this cleared out, you figure it out, but it's not my problem. It's like, it's your problem. But in this case, it's like, let me, let me see what you're doing. And so it was born aligned already, which is very unique, very unique. So you're fortunate enough to have that that experience, I hope you're, you're taking uh, some learnings from, from their own experience. Now we have to do the post-mortem and see <laughs> who annoyed who and what went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of things go wrong, but uh, just for the, you know, if you don't lose the collective on the shared vision, right? Yep. Um, so I'm sure it was an intense experience, but the result is amazing. Both brands live well together. You know, and, and, I think and we stress many teams in both companies. Yeah. I mean, the <laughs> traditional deadlines were killed uh, every week. So, yeah, I think with the effort of all the people involved, which is also very good, and, and it's, uh, I think it's very positive, it is we had full alignment in both companies because we all wanted to achieve what we wanted to, to achieve the first year, yes. which is not easy because the, the easiest way, because of this challenge of creating two brands together um, and sharing information that it's in some cases were absolutely confidential, even for themselves. 
So they were not allowed to, to share with us. And we were conditioned because of that. Uh, they, the easiest way was to say, okay, let's start with the brand. And we can start with many other things the second year. But we were all committed trying to, to get the most for the f very first year. And we stressed a little bit the two companies and everybody uh, uh, ma yeah. made a big effort and we, we did it. Ne never is a good time to change a brand. <laughs> <laughs> never. never. No, that's true. <laughs> no, but uh, precisely what you said, the milestone. Yeah. The milestone uh, was everything, was the, you know, the push we need to, to build uh, a tool, yeah. basically, because the brand is a tool. Uh, to represent who we are, and then once you are creating from scratch, uh, it's easy to be generous. Mm. And this generosity, in terms of the design system, in terms of verbal guidelines, in terms of everything, uh, generous with, with the claps, of course, because the brand can uh, flow with the color claps, is a way of connecting uh, to the audiences, but generous in terms of how we can both brands represent together that is not just two logos together, it's something common in common. That's something that you, that you repeatedly said, both, both, both of you, that you wanted to be the most powerful collaboration in the history of football, not just pasting, pasting two logos. But uh, before we move on to the last phase, because we're, we're about uh, running out of time, I want to um, uh, tap into something that uh, Jorge mentioned, which is the teams. Have you felt in this, um, in this process uh, that that's kind of an internal or a cultural pride of belonging to something bigger. Uh, and if you have felt that, can you share some experiences of your teams? How your teams felt of like, now we're something different. Now with these guys together, we're really transforming the way we enjoy football for the fans. Well, like, I'm happy to kick it off and I go back to sort of what I mentioned when the team first saw um, the new broadcast package for La Liga. Uh, at the start of this year, it was just this moment of tremendous pride because um, it was really about innovating, not emulating, is how we describe it. Mm. And, and sort of delivering things for our fans that they haven't seen before um, and that will give them new experiences. And when we look back at just the sheer amount that we had to work through, I think it was almost 200 assets Yep. that were pulled together um, collectively that we had to work through. And I think the, the execution is about elegance first and for, foremost. Um, and I, I, I think the teams, um, both our organizations really came together and, I, and the, the output is fantastic. But it's just the first step. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, I remember one specific situation that uh, I think is uh, very representative that when we had a meeting in Vancouver and we were saying what if we can include your uh, your graphics into our games would be a good idea for you and then uh, I, I remember the faces and you asked for some more people to join the meeting uh, so the technical guys which is the one that are working with that and they say, well, these guys are proposing this idea. Do you feel comfortable with that? Well, the faces were amazing. <laughs> so I think it is very representative because they, they said, oh, are we talking about the same? Are we really talking about this? Are you asking and to do the, yeah. the, the broadcasting yeah. graphics? Yeah. We have been trying to impact in other broadcasters or, who are, or whoever for a while, and it was not even possible. And you said that we can work together in making this possible. Well, it was a really, really uh, different experience, yeah. like any other. As, as uh, Nick just said, it's just the beginning, right? Yeah. Like we just, it was just the start. Uh, how do you envision the future? And with this, we're going to wrap it up. If you can share with the audience, how do you en envision the future of this collaboration, of this partnership? Uh, you know, when, when, when we're talking about uh, reinventing the football experience for the fans, how do you see the future? Well, as you said, we have just started. It is true that we wanted, to, we wanted to start in a very powerful way, so we have brought many, many things, but uh, the, the best is just to, it's to come. Uh, so when we talk about transforming football, it is transforming the experience, uh, but uh, also off-pitch, so the, all the, the social impact that we want to create. But I would say that uh, Working with these guys, uh, always thinking about the innovation and the state of the art technology will, will help us to, to transform football and transform the game.
Mm -hmm. Asher? Yeah, I mean, same here. I mean, this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, the best is going to, to arrive uh, because with the alignment we've got, and you mentioned, I mean, everything is, is, is possible. So uh -huh. uh, keep transforming, keep building uh -huh. this future of football in the biggest meaning possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo all of this. It's incredibly exciting to consider where we might be in a few years from now. But I think it would be, as you, know, as you guys have said, it's about creating the future of football fandom and how we ground that in technology. Mm -hmm. And the only other piece I would add is just that continued press on immersion. And this year we had a number of stadiums that had cameras and we were able to pull in the data of what was happening in matches. In the future, more stadiums, more matches, more incredible moments, more signature moments that we remember uh, that will show up in the game right away and will connect you between real world play and interactive play mm -hmm. in, a, in a way that only we can do together. Hmm. Well, thank you so much. You know, just to wrap up, uh, this, uh, this is a perfect example of the true meaning of the word partnership. The true meaning of the word partnership is being part of the same ship. And these guys are clearly part of the same ship. And it's not in the ship of video games or real games. It's in the ship of enhancing the experience and transforming the experiences for all the fans around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick, James, Angela, Jorge, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.